Jedi Survivor has so many different hidden secrets and mechanics within the game. The devs have gone all out on all the little smaller details within the game. And today we're going to be going over 10 things that you guys didn't know you could do in Jedi Survivor. And some of these are definitely pretty awesome. Now, two days from this video as well, I'm actually going to be doing a video on 50, yes, 50 Easter eggs that I've found so far within Jedi Survivor. So if you guys are new to the channel and you enjoy content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. But without wasting any more time, let's get stuck right into it. Now, the first one on the list here is something that I actually only figured out by seeing one of the developers tweet this over the last few days. When you are customizing your lightsaber and you scroll through to the actual crossguard section of the customization, you can actually change the angle at which the crossguard vents, I guess you would call them, are actually angled. So on the base crossguard, it obviously is just at a 90 degree angle, pretty much the same as Kylo Ren's, for example. But as you can see, you can actually move it up and down to your own preference. And this just adds even more flair and customization to the actual lightsaber itself so definitely a cool little touch there from the developers and be sure to give this one a try if you haven't already now the next thing that i only just very recently found out is that the tronto shell which is the big sort of like dinosaur looking thing at pretty much the very start of Kobo, you can actually interact with this and you can tame that Tronto shell the same way that you tame or actually call the Neko mounts throughout the planet. Now, when you do this, as you can see, it will actually sort of bring its head down towards Cal and it does actually have some vines on one of those like tentacle things there. So you can actually jump onto the Tronto shell and it will then actually move you across to this little hidden section of the map, which has got some cool little unlockables, one of which is actually a really cool lightsaber. And I will be touching on that in another upcoming video going over all of the best lightsaber unlocks in the game so definitely keep an eye out for that video but in the meantime you guys now know how to tame the Tronto shell and I thought this is definitely a cool little addition that is really easy to slip under the radar. Now something else that I found out through the actual developers themselves I'm not going to say who but a little bird told me that when you change BD1's visor when you're actually customizing BD1 this will actually change the look of the binoculars that you can use to get a better look of each planet so as you can see each time I'm changing his photoreceptors which are essentially his eyes when I get out and actually go into the binocular view it is actually different every time this is a crazy level of detail from the developers they have absolutely knocked all of this stuff out of the park and once again this is something that is very very easy to miss now just earlier I mentioned the mounts within the game and something that you can obviously do is tame the mounts and jump on them to ride around each planet now something that I found really helpful and kind of saves a lot of time is that instead of actually pressing R3 to mount onto these animals you can actually just jump on their back and it will all automatically mount and the animation is a whole lot quicker so if you see a Neko running around and you want to jump on you don't have to run right up to it and press R3 you can literally just do a double jump and you'll pretty much land instantly on the back of that Neko now getting back to the customization within the game on pretty much the same screen that I just showed earlier something that I think a lot of people actually haven't found out and to be honest this is one that I thought was like common knowledge until I saw a heap of people actually talking about it and not realizing it was a thing in the saber customization you can actually cycle through each stance you can see up in the top right of the screen there there are all five stances and you can actually cycle through these to see what the lightsaber looks in each stance obviously when it's the double blade it's really really long and you don't get to see what it looks like when it would be a single blade or the cross card for example and so yeah if you guys want to see how your saber will look in each different stance all you need to do is click the preview button which i believe is triangle or y and then from there you can cycle through all of the different stances and see how your saber looks now the next one is very very easy to miss in fact i dare say like less than one percent of players will ever find this out obviously the touchpad on the PS5 and I believe it would be maybe the select button on Xbox. I haven't actually played yet on Xbox so I can't say for sure but whatever button it is to bring up your map anyway on the Xbox, that button obviously just brings up the map. That's all it's for. Now you can actually go into the settings and into the accessibility settings and you can change this so that when you press that button instead of instantly bringing up the hollow map, it actually gives you four different options and there are a bunch of options to choose from. Some of which are like photo mode. You can go to slow mode. You can obviously still bring up the map as well. You can have have like navigation assist and stuff in there it is really really handy and I think it's actually going to be fairly slept on by a lot of players simply because one most people are going to miss out on this but two even if you know about it it doesn't actually seem that useful but once you use it I can assure you you guys are going to find this a whole lot faster than having to go into the settings and change these things through I guess the regular way now something else that is actually very relevant to this channel because as you guys may know I am actually going to be doing a grandmaster playthrough of the entire game live on the channel and as this video goes up I believe I I've actually started that and something that actually relates to that is that the amount of dots down in the bottom left on the UI 
actually indicates the difficulty level of whoever is playing. So obviously if you're watching a streamer or if you're just playing yourself, it'll actually show you what the difficulty is depending on the dots. As you can see down the bottom there, that is on Grandmaster. And when you can see those two dots in the, I guess, diagonal corners, that means it is Grandmaster. And then one single dot in each different corner pretty much indicates which difficulty that is. So if you've got a favorite streamer that you watch, if you're watching people's content on YouTube and you want to know which difficulty they are on, you simply just need to see what the dot is and then you can just cross reference that with your own settings and see which difficulty that player is on. Now, the next one is something that is, I'm going to be honest, a little bit silly. And if you are all about the immersion in this game, this one is probably not going to be for you, but I've found essentially the fastest way you can get around the planet. Now you will need to be progressed far enough through the game to have the mid-air dash, which I believe you get around like seven or eight hours through the game. And once you have this, you guys are going to be absolutely sprinting around the planets that you are exploring. Now, all you need to do is essentially do a jump and then instantly dash forward. Forward. This will sort of cancel the height of the actual jump. So you're only going to be a little bit off the ground, but that dash will still work. And then because you're already so low to the ground, you'll instantly be back on the ground, at which point you can just literally spam the exact same button combo, which is just jump, dash, jump, dash, jump, dash. And as you guys can see, you can absolutely fly around the map. Now, again, it looks a bit goofy if you're playing for immersion, if you just want a fun Star Wars experience, this may not be for you, but if you are a completionist or you just want to explore as quick as you possibly can, then definitely get in the hang of this because it will get you around faster than even riding on the back of most mounts. Now, another little hidden mechanic from the developers is actually the ability to interact with BD1. I'm sure you guys know that there are, for example, the boglings that you can actually pet. And that alone is a very fun little mechanic, but you can actually pretty much do the same thing with BD1. If you just hold down on the D-pad, Cal will actually sort of enter in a conversation or a little one-liner with BD1, and it can range from a bunch of different things. Sometimes they do a little fist bump. Sometimes BD1 taps him on the shoulder and kind of hides from him. It's pretty fun to see what they do, and it's just yet another awesome little addition to the game that they didn't really need to put in there, but it shows the love and care they have put into the game to put all of these little secrets in there. Now, the last one is actually really handy from a gameplay perspective when you're coming up against these Riot Shield Scout Troopers. Obviously, their shields are very, very solid for defending against Cal's Saber, but what you can do is actually just force pull them, and instead of pulling them like it would do with just a regular trooper, for example, it will actually pull the shield towards you, and from there, you can actually use that shield to block it incoming blaster bolts and even throw it at enemies for pretty much a one hit kill on most of the regular enemies in the game. It will even block incoming like melee attacks as well. Now we'll just pretty much get deleted from a single hit, but even still it is actually very, very handy if you're up against a bunch of enemies and there is a shield, you can literally just pick it up and try and sort of slow that battle down. And this is something that yet again is actually very, very easy to miss. So anyway, guys, those are 10 things that some of you may not have known about Jedi Survivor. I definitely enjoy making videos like this one. So if you guys have any more hidden tips, then definitely let me know down in the comment section. And if you guys enjoy this video enough, then I can absolutely make a follow up to this one. So be sure to leave all of your hidden secrets down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you are new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe for more Jedi Survivor content. But with that being said, thank you all very much for watching. You guys have a great day and may the force be with you always.